Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Got something a little bit different than usual this time around. Today we're going to be playing XCOM, Enemy Within. If you aren't familiar with it, long story short is I'm the general in charge of Earth's defenses, and I'll be the one responsible for fighting off an alien invasion. God help us all. But it wouldn't be a Backlogs video if we didn't add our own personal twist. So today, we're going to find out. Can you beat XCOM Enemy Within with only a single soldier? Let's go over the rules. First off, once we complete the tutorial mission, we can only use one soldier for the rest of the game. This soldier will be dropped into combat alone, and will be solely responsible for the defense of Earth. Second, if the game forces me to take on another soldier, which it will, I can't use that soldier in any way that would be seen as aggressive. This means I can move them around the map and tell them to hunker down behind cover, but that's about it. Third, I'm only allowed to manually save the game after I clear a mission. That way, if my soldier dies in the next mission, I don't have to restart the entire run. This is the only bit of save scumming I'm allowed. If my soldier gets horribly injured, but survives, then that's the reality we're going to have to live with. Fourth, no cheating or exploits. And fifth, because this game is so long, I'm allowed to use a mod that speeds up the game's animations. This doesn't affect the numbers, combat, or mechanics in any way, but it will let me get this video out in shorter than six months. So yeah, it's allowed. With all that said and done, let's begin. We're turning the difficulty down to easy for this one. Call me a coward if you like, but something tells me 1 vs 10,000 is going to be hard enough without increasing the enemy AI or my chance to miss shots. I decided to select the Operation Progeny option for a little extra story, but other than that I didn't engage any of the other options. We have enough to worry about as it is. I select Europe as my base of operations, so we can boost our research lab and workshop development, then get the party started. Look at these sweet innocent babies. I am so sorry for what I'm going to put you through. The tutorial mission is pretty bland, so I'm going to skip through it pretty quickly. This is the only mission I'll ever get to use a full team, so this is also the fastest mission I'll ever do. Oh look, friends! Maybe we can teach them how to play some good old fashioned baseball. Eh, they don't seem that interested. We won though. Well, it didn't go exactly as planned. Gustav fell out of the jet when we got there initially. <laughs> he was mortified. And also horribly injured. But the rest of the team got promoted. Hooray for you! Which means it's time to select our lone wolf. Gotta guess which one it'll be? Did you guess the assault class? Well, you shouldn't have. That's right, it's sniper time, baby. Our sniper's first skill is headshot. Does exactly what it says on the tin. Use the skill, increase the chances of a critical hit by a massive amount. Simple enough. I tell my research lab to start studying weapon fragments, then get my workshop to start building my base out a bit more. And now for the most important part, customizing our soldier. Considering this man is going to be Earth's equivalent of an alien destroying savior, I name him Chief. I also give him a matching paint job and helmet, just in case the reference wasn't clear. And before you know it, we have our first mission. Good luck Chief, you're gonna need it. In the early game, there are several things we need in order to have any chance of success. First off, Chief needs to collect some kills. The more kills and experience he gets, the more skills he'll obtain. The more skills he obtains, the better he'll be at collecting kills. And so on. The second thing we need is Meld, which is found around the map in time-sensitive containers. We don't need much, but we will need at least a little bit to help modify Chief's genetic structure, much like John117 himself. But we'll talk more about that later. And third, we're going to need all the alien parts we can get our hands on. Bodies, weapons, you name it. Earth technology is terrible in comparison and I wouldn't mind getting some upgrades. Damn, Chief, save some for the rest of us. What a great start. This might be, uh... Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Did the game just crash? So, yeah, game crashed, and the autosave didn't kick in in time. Goodbye, Irish Master Chief. You were taken from us too soon. I'll save you the play-by-play. -play. I restarted the campaign, completed the tutorial mission, and got our new Chief. I guess he's American this time around. Considering how much hoorah we're gonna need for this run, that feels appropriate. After saving, I run Chief through his first mission with pretty much the same results. He got a little injured, which is probably fine for now, since the game usually takes it easy on us and doesn't give us too many missions in the beginning, but that's going to have to change in the future. I launch some satellites, reorganize my air force a bit, then the important bit, rewarding Chief with his first medal. Soldiers get little boosts for performing well, in the form of medals, and this medal gives Chief a better chance to hit enemies that are trying to hide behind cover. Should be helpful. I also researched genetic labs, so I can start making Chief into the super soldier he was always meant to be. First up on the docket will be this adaptive bone marrow, which will reduce Chief's recovery time by 66%. Definitely important, considering we're defenseless if he's out of commission. I've also got hyperreactive pupils researched for increased chances to hit, but that's secondary to the healing problem. And wouldn't you know it, the game is going to show us exactly why. Apparently there's a bomb somewhere, and we need to get rid of it, but Chief is still healing. 
which means we can't get rid of the bomb. Sorry, Egypt. I'm sure you'll be fine. See? Totally fine. Oh, come on! All right, fine, send the plane. Chief's still out of commission, but at least we can take down the UFO. All right, good job, team. Maybe Chief will heal up before the mission goes away. Well, fuck you, game. Well, all the more reason to get that genetics lab up and running. Oh, we unlock scopes too, which will help keep Chief nice and accurate. It does replace his grenade, which is a shame, but I'd rather he be able to hit things from long range than explode smaller enemies. All right, Chief. Second mission, second chance. Don't mess it up this time. This may only be the second mission, but XCOM is already pulling no punches. My best bet is to keep Chief back behind cover and at long range. If he gets up close, he'll lose the advantage he gets for having a sniper rifle, and enemies will have a higher chance to hit. Which, as we've already seen, absolutely ruins us in the grander scheme of things. After a few closer calls than I'd like, Chief finally kills the last of the sectoids without getting injured. Thank god. Ooh, a promotion. Considering we don't have any teammates to use for squad sight, which is a real shame because that skill is a beast, we're going with Snapshot, which will let us move and fire with the sniper rifle on the same turn, at the cost of accuracy. Better than nothing. Ah, good, the genetics lab is done. Let's get Chief souped up. I'm thinking some new bones ought to do him some good. Ugh, three days. Sure hope the aliens take weekends. While waiting on Chief to recover from surgery, the scientists decide they want to capture some aliens alive. Cool, can't wait to have to deal with that. And, despite all odds, the Earth keeps it together long enough for Chief to go through his gene modification. Vital signs look normal. No freezer burn? Okay, Chief, go ahead and climb out of that cryotube. Uh, I was gonna have the nurse take those out for you, but sure, that works too. Anyway, after a few alien autopsies, fighter jet upgrades, and the reinvention of the taser gun, we get our first monthly report. What? Egypt, what the hell, man? One itty bitty bomb goes off and you decide to leave? Actually, now that I say that out loud, that kind of makes sense. Everyone else seems pretty happy with how well the Master Chief program is going, though. I'll take what I can get. I upgrade the base a bit, give Chief new eyes that give him more accuracy if he ever misses, then get hit with our first UFO. Well, second, we shot down that other one a while back, but this is the first one we'll actually get to enter. If our jets can actually bring it down. Come on. Come on. Whew. Had me worried for a second there. All right, Chief, time to get you loaded up. Where the hell are your sleeves? What, a little genetic modification and suddenly full body armor is too good for you? At least wear some shoulder pads. I don't want you to get a chill. Man, I wonder what we're gonna find inside that UFO. Uh, you know, on second thought, is there any way to just nuke it from orbit? Ew, what are you supposed to be? You look like a mix between a child's idea of a cool car and- Oh my God, it hurts! Oh, good, they can auto flank. Great, no, perfect, just what I needed right now. Let's just run away, followed by a little bit of offense, and there we go, much better. Oh yeah, I forgot, our genetic modification heals us in the middle of battle. My little dude really is turning into the Master Chief. Oh, you too, huh? Well, that worked out well for your buddy, let's see how well it works for you. Yeah, that's about what I expected. And with that, the last one gains a brain cell and decides to run. Oh god, what fresh hell is this? Thin men in suits? Fine, sure, have a bullet. Okay, looks like we're pretty much done here. Just one alien left. The Outsider. I think it's just the pilot for the UFO. Nothing too special. Take it out, would you? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Ow! Okay, regroup and try again. Take your time, line up your shot, and what the hell are you aiming at? <sighs> Look, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Restart. Take out the floaters, take out the thin men. Ooh, collateral damage, that's good to know. And settle our vendetta with the outsider. Personally. And there you go. Easy peasy. And all it cost us was Chief being gravely wounded. But hey, a promotion. Ooh, and beam weapons. This new promotion means Chief will either be really good with pistols or really good when he's on high ground. Considering Chief is going to have to get in close and personal at times, we're going to take the gunslinger option. Sleep tight, Chief. Get some rest. Just let those alien abduction alarms and council secret mission alerts lull you to sleep. I'm sure it wasn't anything important anyway. While Chief heals up and the world goes to shit, I develop some laser pistols, start researching laser sniper rifles, and... Oh, come on. Really? Now? At least Army Commander Sweaterweather gets it. He's tired of XCOM shit, too. Oh, thank God. Chief is awake and moving. Rise and shine, beautiful. We've got bacon to burn. Also, can we appreciate the fact that the game gave him the nickname of Alpha? I didn't choose that. The game picks that on its own. Anyway, let's get this shit show on the road. Godspeed, Chief. You're gonna need it. This mission is a terror mission, which means that there's a lot of aliens running around and civilians that I need to save on top of that. Um, th th they were dead when I got here. Not only that, but my least favorite enemy in the game is here too. Everyone, meet the Chrysalid. 
Chief, show him how we say hello in American. Any day now. There we go. Three damage. Oh, God. Too close. Too close. Okay, strategically run away and kill it. Really? You know what, Chief? That's on you. You deserve that. I reload the save, but I realized this time that I actually had a new medal I could have used. This one grants plus two aim per nationality on your team. So, you know, just plus two. But hey, every little bit helps. All right, let's try this again. Different scenery this time, but the mission remains the same. I give the laser pistol a try. Very nice. And opt to keep my distance from literally everyone, including the civilians. Some of you may die, but that's a risk I'm willing to take. And if you think I'm running out into the darkness with noises like that happening out there, you can think again. I kill a few more enemies from the safety of my boat, while the death counter continues to rise. I'm sure it's fine. No, oh, God, not you guys again. Well, outrunning them isn't going to be an option. Might as well take one of you with me. Okay, go ahead. I accept my... Where, where are you going? Hello? Well, never look a gift horse in the mouth. Whatever that means. I use the old Overwatch until it dies approach, getting in a free first hit, and then a second before it could reach me. Now to deal with... Oh, uh, okay. I guess that was it. I mean, I'm not complaining. I just assumed there would be some more zombies to deal with. Oh, did I fail to mention that? Any humans the chrysalid kills turn into zombies, which then turn into more chrysalids. It's a real chestburster kind of scenario. Highly recommend killing all chrysalids you see as soon as possible. Well, looks like the chief got another promotion. Way to go, champ. Disabling shot is great from a defense or support perspective, but we don't really have that luxury. The best defense is a strong offense. So, I opt for the battle scanner. Basically a grenade that lets me see parts of the map I couldn't see before. I'm sure it'll come in handy. Moving right along, I build a holding cell for aliens, finished developing long-range lasers, then got immediately upset because I can't actually build the damn things. One engineer short? Really? Oh, good, and now there's a UFO. Can't a guy get a break around here? Well, at least the laser pistol is able to hold its own at this point. It's guaranteed to do at least three damage, which is enough to kill some of the weaker enemies outright. I also really appreciate that I don't have to reload it. Cuts down on some of the downtime. A few choice shots later, and we clear the UFO with zero mishaps. Finally, some good news. Combine that with the fact that Chief got another promotion, and things are looking up. Executioner just gives extra aim against low health enemies, but my end goal is to make it so that everything dies in one hit, so that won't help us much. Opportunist, however, fits the bill nicely. Overwatch just got a hefty boost in aim, and can now cause critical hits. Hell yeah. And after cutting into a chrysalid we brought home, I can give Chief bioelectric skin, which not only helps keep enemies from physically grabbing him, but also gives him a sixth sense, letting him sense enemies that are close, even if he can't see them. Just turning on all the hacks we can at this point. Now I'll skip ahead a bit. We go on a few more missions, Chief kills aliens while simultaneously doing laundry, and the aliens respond in the most logical way possible, with extreme fear. Even though Chief isn't fully decked out, he's getting to the point where he's an absolute killing machine. Just send him in and watch him go. Chief earns another promotion, making it so that all cover counts as full cover. Nice. And I can finally afford that new sniper rifle he keeps asking for. Putting it into practice, it was well worth the effort. One shot kill, every time. It's getting to the point where I can almost set it and forget it. Just put Chief in Overwatch and let the enemy come to me. Headshots for everyone. And then XCOM decided it was time to increase the difficulty again. Utahns are big, angry, and take more than one hit to kill. The arms race continues. Oh, Seekers are a thing now too. They like to turn invisible and strangle you to death. So that's fun. Thankfully, Chief can actually sense them and gives them a fun electric shock if they ever try to grab him. So we don't have to worry about that part at least. But I think this is the game's way of saying we need to hurry up and upgrade our abilities and equipment. We'll start with capturing an alien alive. Good night, sweet prince. Do a bit more murdering, do a bit of panicking, add a few pistol upgrades to really make it sing, and make some actual armor for Chief. Finally. Now you can finally cover up those arms of yours. Or, you know, you could just not. And would you look at that? Right in the nick of time. Whoo, baby, that's a big one. Good thing we have a few buffs to add to our dinky little ships. See? Not even close. Time to send in our army of one. Hopefully we're ready. This ship is absolutely massive, and Lord only knows what we're gonna find inside. Whew, man, okay. Lemon, breathe. Just breathe. Big ship, full of aliens. How bad can it be? Ow. 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 Ow! Okay, that could have gone smoother, but uh, hey, cleared the ship so far. Let's see, ominous looking control panels, last room in the entire ship. Yeah, this must be the boss room. Well, can't quite see what's inside, but that's what battle scanners are for. Get in there, little buddy. Do, do you want to talk about what just happened? Let's try that again. Still can't see shit, but I've got another scanner. Maybe this time it'll go more than two feet. 
There we go. Hmm, okay. Not the bombastic ending I was expecting, but whatever. There's one, and there's two. Easy peasy. Yep. Easy peasy. Well, at least we got more than ruptured organs with that mission. Got a whole bunch of alien Ikea furniture, too. So that's neat. The story stuff is also happening, but I'll save you the time. The too long didn't listen version is that the scientists had such a good time with the last live alien I captured, they want me to catch another one. One of those pilot things, in fact. Boy, sure is a shame I haven't seen one of those around lately. Uh, uh, alive. Guess we'll just have to keep spinning the globe until we can find another one. I do a couple more missions, get a few more captures, and before you know it, Chief gets his final promotion. This is the big one, the one that I've been waiting for. You've got two options. In the zone, which is amazing if you're playing the game normally, and complete garbage if you're playing like I am. And double tap, which gives me two shots for one action, so long as I don't move. I'm sure you can see why I'm excited about this. I've literally increased my action economy by 100%. Which could not have come at a better time, because wouldn't you know it, we've got a new threat to deal with. Turns out there's some alien sympathizers, known as Exult, who are trying to undermine everything I stand for. Freedom, the right to bear arms, and the ability to chew ass and kick bubblegum. Did, uh, did you want to retry that line? Why? Um, I think you misread the script. I know what I said. The problem, which I've been dreading, is that in order to engage with the Exult forces, we need to send in a secret agent to infiltrate their bases. And as awesome as Chief looks in a jacket and jeans, oh, now you wear sleeves, I need him too badly for everyday abductions and terror attacks. So we need a new recruit. I've actually gotten a few decent recruits from missions, so let's go with this one. Because Assault means they can run fast, and because their nickname is Wolverine. Honestly, I probably would have chosen them just for the nickname alone. Assault is just a bonus. I go ahead and give our new secret agent all of the defense options, more to keep her alive than anything else, then give her her customary plastic surgery that all of my soldiers get. Welcome to the crew, Miss Lemon. Glad to have you aboard. After getting her suited up with a secret agent jacket and jeans, I send her off to go get me some gossip about Exalt. Godspeed, dear wife. Godspeed. While Miss Lemon is out and about, I find another UFO, and look who decided to show their face. Do me a favor, hold my taser. Thanks. The scientists get all excited about this, go on and on about making some sort of signal or something, I wasn't really paying attention, but then I get a notice that Miss Lemon is ready for pickup. That was fast. Alright Chief, let's go get him. For this mission, we're playing a game of King of the Hill. If the enemy grabs the hill, and holds it for a few turns, we lose. If I kill every enemy on the map, I win. Simple enough concept, I think I can manage it. The main problem with Exult is twofold. First, they act like my own soldiers do, with class special abilities and the like. And second, Exalt is a big fan of helicoptering in more forces. Thankfully, that double tap ability Chief got came just at the right time. With the amount of damage our sniper rifle does at the moment, we're able to reliably kill off two enemies every other turn. As per the rules, Miss Lemon can't actually assist me with the mission in any meaningful way. She can move around the map and hunker down to keep out of enemy sight lines, but that's about it. It takes about 20 minutes to clear the entire map, but eventually the last Exalt member goes down. 16v1 and Chief isn't even tired. Let's go. Aside from the impressive body count, I also got some intel from Miss Lemon about where Exalt headquarters are. She discovered that Exalt isn't in South Africa. Okay. Uh, I mean, something a bit more specific about where Exalt is would have been nice, but it's better than nothing. The scientists also do a thing with the thing that we brought them, and lo and behold, there's an alien base somewhere on Earth. Guess it's time we go murder everything that lives there. Alright, Chief, you know the drill. If it doesn't look human, show it how lasers work. Oh, and don't mind the pulsating pink nerves in the background. I'm sure that's nothing. Slow and steady is for people with a plan, so let's just- Oh god, that's a lot of contacts. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Wasn't great, but wasn't bad. Oh, good, they have drones now. They aren't strong by any stretch of the imagination, but they do act as distractions and a drain on my limited action economy. Was that too technical? Here, let me re-explain. I have to shoot them, which means I have less time to shoot something else. Speaking of something else, that's going to be a problem. Crystals are still a major threat to the Chief, and three at once is a death sentence. God, they move so fast! There's no way to get away from them. Either they're across the map and you get one free shot on them, or they're eating your face while you watch. Well, at least I got to send one of them to the Abyss. But unfortunately, it's simple math. They hit too hard and too fast to deal with in our current state. I tried the alien base assault mission multiple times, hoping that maybe the Crystals would be changed into a different enemy, but it looks like they're a staple. There's always three, and they always kill me. It doesn't matter how many times I re-roll the mission. Death is inevitable. So, instead of throwing Chief into the grinder some more, we're gonna keep upgrading our equipment and come back to that mission later. 
Hopefully we can upgrade our weapons into those sweet, sweet plasma weapons the aliens are so fond of using. It'll take some time, but I'm sure the rest of the world will understand. Oh, there goes China. Considering going to need a few more alien weapon materials and the like to make it to that point though, let's raid a few more UFOs. The hell is that? Oh god, that is terrifying. Oh, and it gets a shield from being buffed by other sectoids? That That's fine. Uh, what are you doing? Please step away from the chief. Okay, well, that's fucking intimidating. I guess it could be worse. Oh, that's worse. The fuck is that? Tensor's floating disc? Oh, come on! So, yeah, I don't think I need to elaborate how well this mission went. It didn't. Unfortunately, we're starting to fall behind in the arms race. The aliens are ramping up their tech, and while it's not hopeless, I found myself dying and restarting more and more often. On top of this, Exalt is still a pain in my spleen. And while they aren't nearly as bad as the aliens are at this point, they're getting worse. Guess we're not the only ones dabbling in genetic mutations. Well, at least we're narrowing down the Exalt problem. Miss Lemon just ruled out all of Asia, so that's good. Also, can we rewind for a second? Did you see that kill count? 118. Chief, buddy, save some for the rest of the Earth. Anyway, we... <laughs> Okay, drop everything we were doing. I want that, and I want it now. 50 weapon fragments, say no more. All right, that should about do it. It took several hours and a multitude of missions, but surely that's enough murder and mayhem. Oh, 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 oh yeah, it's time. We don't have everything I wanted, plasma pistol would have been a welcome addition to Chief's loadout, but the plasma sniper should mean we can one-shot, one-kill anything that comes our way. Oh look, a test run. Here, hold my beer. Oh yeah, that'll do. Time for the true test. Come and get some, boys. Test number one. Looks promising. Ah, fuck. Okay, heavy testing time. So long as Chief is able to get a hit, they should die no matter what. His base damage should be eight minimum, and while they still hurt when they hit, Chief's fancy new armor is actually poison proof, so that's another bit of damage removed from the equation. A few more taps on the trigger, and the threat is pretty much neutralized. They still get a few last hits on me, which is annoying, but considering that Chief is alive and recovering after dealing with four chrysalids, I'd consider this a complete success. And right when I'm feeling good about myself, XCOM throws in a new twist. See our boy here? Wanna guess how much health he has? Did you happen to guess goddamn 20? Even with the critical, I don't think my sniper can dish out that much damage. Close, but no cigar. Okay, ow, calm down over there. Not gonna lie, I was kinda hoping my days of scraping by with the skin in my teeth were over, but I guess that's not the case. Ah well, silver linings. After clearing the rest of the base, we reach the end and find another new species, a sectoid commander. I don't see what all the fuss is, it's got a lot of health, but nothing we can't kill or capture. Oh, oh that's bad. That's really bad. Let's just get rid of you. Yeah, there we go. Carl, did you get that on camera? You didn't ruin the shot by getting stuck on level geometry, did you? And that's it. That's the end. Everyone's happy, we beat the big bad, and we can finally take a break from all of this nonsense. What? What is it? Why is the scientist lady upset? Ah, oh, man. All right, too long didn't watch version. My scientists want to know more about the psychic alien and what it was trying to use this here thingamajig to communicate with. They're worried that this wasn't the actual big bad. All right, guess we're not done yet. Oh, and we still have Exalt to deal with. Guess I kind of forgot about that. We've narrowed it down quite a bit, but Miss Lemon's intel is getting, um, I mean, I don't want to say unhelpful, but anyway, the way I figure, Exalt shouldn't be much of a problem that much longer. A few more missions of theirs, and we should be able to assault their HQ and be done with them. Well, that doesn't sound good. Whoa, okay, sure, just spawn Exalt minions right on the hill, that's fine. Well, even if it weren't for them actually being tactical with that smoke grenade, there's no way Chief can actually clear out all the enemies in time. The encoder is a guaranteed loss. With that in mind, Miss Lemon and I are going to have to hang out near the transmitter hill zone. That way we can at least force it to stay neutral if any enemies are able to step foot inside. Ah shit, here we go again- oh god, okay, they have lasers now. As per usual, Exalt swarms the area with new mobs every turn, but thankfully, Chief is able to keep a good eye on the transmitter. Anything that decides it's a good idea to peek around gets a bucket of plasma to the face. All this killing is really giving me a run for the money, though. I have to constantly reload to make sure we don't- Yeah, no, that's fine. It's not like I don't have any ammo or anything. The hell is that? Oh, good smoke. Now I can't kill the guys inside even if I wanted to. Well, only one option left. I send Miss Lemon in so she can block the hack for as long as she can. With a little luck, she'll live long enough for Chief to clear out the pack. Okay. 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 Three misses in a row. You don't see that every day. 
It's a bit of a roller coaster for a minute there, between the near misses, the less than near misses, and the headache that comes from trying to figure out how to not explode a transmitter with my own bullets. But eventually, with a little bit of meat shielding, we get the victory. Woo! Oh god, this run is starting to get a bit too stressful. The enemies are starting to reach power levels that I don't think we're going to be able to match with a single soldier. It's been a race to the finish line this entire run, but I think we're almost out of time. We better check all of our options, make sure we didn't miss anything. Oh, right, the barracks. I wonder if... What? How did... How long has this been here? Rapid healing? Experience boosts? Ah, well. Nothing we can do about it now. All we can do now is keep pushing and hope that we reach the end before the aliens do. Because the last thing this world needs is alien dance parties. Look at them. Two-stepping around enjoying themselves makes me sick not gonna lie things aren't looking good the council may be giving me a b rating but it feels like they're rating on a bell curve but things are looking up with psionic labs under construction we should be able to outpace the aliens and get to the finish before they can uh what's happening oh fuck this is bad news this is really bad news thanks to exalt's meddling we have to defend XCOM itself the defenses have been breached and the aliens are on their way this is it this is the line in the sand. There's no rerolls for this mission. Either we can beat it, or we can't. Time to see what Chief is made of. Oh. Uh, okay, so I think you may have taken me a bit too literally there. This mission. Good God, this mission. I went through multiple stages with this one, so allow me to walk you through the absolute shit show this was. As you can see, the game has forced an entire team on me. Normally, you'd have all your soldiers, but the only trained soldiers I have here are Chief and Miss Lemon. The rest are all unequipped, untrained rookies. Not that I could use them anyway. At first, I treated these soldiers as complete outliers. I did my regular actions with Chief, moved Miss Lemon into a hunker position, and let the enemies do what they wished to the rookies. Give you a guess what that was. Yeah, none of them lasted very long. Between having no armor and no experience to keep them from panicking and running out into enemy fire, these soldiers were essentially sitting ducks. To their credit, they took the news pretty well. And after several humiliating defeats, I decided to allow myself a slight rule change. Because all of these soldiers were forced on me, they may as well be useful. At first, I only allowed myself to tell them to hunker down, so at the very least they'd be crit-proof. This proved to still not be enough, so by the end, I decided that if I was allowed to move and hunker down Miss Lemon, I was allowed to do the same for all the other meat shields. Uh, I, I mean soldiers. You'd think that would help, since I can now tactically position my guys, but the reality is that the DPS necessary to slim down the enemy forces is simply too high. I mean, look at this. That's three cyber discs in one room. And that's not even counting the chrysalids and the sectoid mechs that are running around in the dark somewhere. The fact of the matter is, no matter what tactic I tried, the aliens always eventually focus fire on Chief. And even Chief can't withstand that much plasma. For those of you unfamiliar, this mission plays out the same way each time, with slight variations. First, enemies burst into the main room, enough to be a hassle right from the word go. Then, a few turns later, enemy air support shows up usually in the form of several cyber disks, floaters, and those squid things from the Matrix. If you're lucky, you'll have cleared out maybe half of the original wave at this point, which includes chrysalids, mechs, berserkers, and sectoid commanders. Which means you have to prioritize your targets. To eliminate the enemies using mind control, the ones that make new enemies from dead soldiers, or the ones that make dead soldiers at a rapid pace. You decide. Then, while you're dealing with that, a fresh wave of sectoids, sectoid commanders, and mechs pops in from the back, crushing you between two waves. And if, by some miracle, you survive those enemies, a few rounds later, another batch of enemies pops out of the ceiling to say hello. At this point, you're probably about 20 enemies deep, maybe more depending on how shit your luck was. And don't you worry, that's not all. There's at least one or two more waves of enemies before the end. Now, I tried everything. I tried full frontal attacks, I tried using my soldiers as distractions, so Chief could get as many kills as possible, and I tried hit and run tactics where I stayed just out of range of the latest wave while slowly retreating. Nothing worked. And can you blame me? I mean, look at this. Look at all the mind-melding and buffing going on. How the hell do you prioritize targets in this mess? So, as frustrating as it is, that's it. There's no way to beat this mission with only a single soldier dishing out damage. Normally, I'd list off a few things I could have done better, or mistakes I might have made along the way that could have changed the outcome, but I'm not sure that that's the case this time around. Maybe I'll try this run again with a different soldier class in the future, and if anyone has any suggestions on what I could have done differently, let me know in the comments down below. But until then... All hail our new alien overlords. Thank you all for watching, stay safe out there, and I'll see you all again soon.